In the last video, we talked briefly about FastQC, a tool that can be used to uh, evaluate and understand read quality metrics that can be either done on raw reads that come off of your sequencer or after quality processing using a tool like Trimomatic. So in this video, we're gonna go through a little more detail what that output looks like. This is the same one we saw from our Streptococcus pneumonia genome assembly after the Trimomatic step. And what is normally done, and I kind of skipped in this part, is assessing the reads before you're trimming. And in that case, a lot of times what you'll see is that uh, this doesn't look so pretty on the left. So on the left, we can see hyperlinks to different parts of the analysis that are run. In um, this case, we see a lot of green check boxes and a couple orange exclamation marks. If something's really bad, there'll be red X's here as well. So if you were to run this on the raw reads, you'd likely would see a few of these that had uh, red X's through them that would greatly improved, be greatly improved by uh, running a program like Trimomatic. So let's go through this in a little more detail. You will see some basic statistics. It has our file name right here, the file format, the total number of sequences, so that's an important piece right there. You could use this along with your read length to determine the idealized coverage of your genome. So for example, I know that I have a 2.1 megabase organism. I have this many sequences. My average read length is 100 base pairs, and I can determine what my coverage is. Again, we usually aim for 30 to 50x for most uh, sequen sequencing experiments. We'll also see the distribution of read lengths. So in this case, uh, the max read length is 100 base pairs. These reads were for, from paired end uh, 100 base pair reads. Most cases, I'm using the 500 cycle kit for the Illumina mic seek, which means that my reads will be 2 by 250. Uh, usually, the little the extra read length will help you out better with your de novo assemblies. So if we continue on, we'll see the per base quality uh, metrics. And this will be kind of as a sliding window from one to 100. And it'll show the distribution of per base quality along that read. Now, if uh, any of you are familiar looking at this, this is a forward read. But if we were looking at a, a reverse read, we usually see a trail off at the end in, um, in, in this area from where it goes from 80 to, let's say, 100 base pairs will drop into the orange. So there's a, a couple things that Trimomatic does, and we can discuss it in this window here. So uh, depending on how you're constructing your libraries, your read length won't always be 100 base pairs. You're going to have a size distribution of your of your reads. If you're using a Cobaris to mechanically shear your DNA, this may actually be uh, more standardized. So you may have uh, a very tight distribution of read lengths. If you're uh, using more enzymatic shearing, then you'll probably have a lot of short sequences in there. So one thing that Trimomatic does is removes a bunch of the short sequences from the assembly process, from the from the reads, and so that they're not passed on to the assembly process. Another thing that it does is it uses a sliding window to assess the base quality. And what it'll do, and, and you can set this, is uh, select either a 20 base pair window where it'll slide along the read, and if uh, the read quality drops into this orange area, so below uh, 28, then what it'll do is remove reads until you get a per base quality in that region above that threshold. And you can see here that we have a pretty hard cutoff. There's nothing in this orange or red area. Even if he was, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but everything here has got a really good Fred scale uh, of 30, 28 or higher, which is uh, a really conservative metric to have when you're talking about uh, read qualities. So that's, uh, that's a, a couple things that Trimmatic does to function, and this is where you really see it pay off in, in this area right here. Uh, we won't go through this in much detail, but uh, we'll, scroll, we'll scroll down to the areas that I, I kind of look at. So this is the per base sequence content. And this will tell you if you have an overabundance of uh, any one nucleotide. It'll also give you an idea of what the GC content is of your organism. Again, here's a, another great one, uh, the per sequence GC content. And if you're familiar with genomics, you'll know this is very species and organism specific. So if you were to look at this uh, for a number of different organisms altogether, and there's a great tool for doing that called MultiQC, you can combine a number of these plots together. And what becomes very apparent is if you have any contamination in your uh, reads. It will usually that'll appear as a double sp spike, or if you have something that you sequence that you think is in, in this case, Streptococcus pneumonia and isn't, 
it will have a very different GC peak than uh, or GC distribution than your target organism. And that's a good red flag when you're looking at a large data set that, hey, I need to look at this in, in more detail. It's either not the species that I think it is, uh, which actually we saw recently in a, a project we were doing with Staph aureus. We found a closely related species that was uh, similar, but not the, the same uh, genome content. Uh, or it will tell you that your sample had contamination in it, which will look like multiple GC pinks or kind of a, a couple additional bumps in here. So this is a, a really helpful uh, figure to look at. Per base end content, that'll tell you whether you have any nucleotides that were undetermined in your sequence. Sequence redistribution, again, uh, I was pretty uh, conservative with my trimming. And as a result, there's really not that much of a distribution. We only see reads that are 98 to 100 base pairs that are in this data set. Sequence level duplication, this again is a, another indication of either adapter contamination or some other type of contamination, which would show up in this underrepresented sequences. And it does that using something called Kamer analysis. So it'll tell you if you have, uh, for example, if you didn't trim off adapters and you had them still left in your data, they would certainly come up in this area. You would see your adapters listed here since each one of your sequences would have the same uh, adapter. And that gets some more explicitly detailed in this figure right here where it has all of the adapters that are stored in this program and will tell you whether any of those adapters are, are still in your, uh, in your data set. So that's the end of it for FASTQC. Uh, for FASTQC, this is again a, a really commonly used and important tool that you can use to assess your sequence quality before moving on to de novo assembly. This is surely when you want to do this stuff before trying to figure out why your phylogenies look weird or why some other down the stream analysis looks odd. But again, a, another tool in the future that we can review is multi QC to be able to do things like overlay a number of these GC content figures uh, on top of each other. So more to come.